And we big begin with our top story today, saying goodbye to James Radio Kennedy. The story of radio goes back to the 1960s when he started to watch the TL Hanna football team practice while carrying a transistor radio. That's how he got his nickname. One day he started mimicking the coaches, yelling out orders and joining in with the practice. Well, eventually the team embraced him as one of their own and became an icon all throughout the community. That story would later become a national one when it inspired a Hollywood movie in 2003 and he passed away last Sunday at just the age of 73. Yesterday, radio was brought back to TL Hanna one last time. Here you can see the, move, the movement, the, hearse, the, the moment they moved the hearse carrying his casket when they took a final lap around that football field. And he was then taken inside the school by the ROTC cadets. We're told he was a member of the Corps as well and the viewing was open to the public. And today the community not. gathered to say their final goodbyes to radio at the Anderson Civic Center. Hundreds of people attended the service with loved ones giving very emotional speeches about the best of the best times with radio and how he touched so many lives. And I was inside the funeral when TL Hanna faculty got very emotional, saying radio may have been a junior for many years, but on December 15th, he graduated with honors as a senior right into heaven. I believe it was God's plan that he arrived on that football field some 50 years ago. I believe one simple act of kindness is what has led us here today. The nation knows him as Radio, the famous forever junior at TL Hanna High School. When visitors came, he'd become a tour guide, methodically taking them first to see his movie poster in the hallway, then to his portrait in the lobby, and lastly to his statue in the stadium. <laughs> he would always ask the same question, did you see my movie? As just a teenager with a radio pressed against his ear, radio mimicked the coach's movements, and from there, his story was born. Never met a stranger, loved everybody that, that he met, and I think all of us learned how to love from him. Coach Harold Jones told stories about the 73-year-old mentally challenged man highlighting his innocence and tremendously large heart. He worked with the defense and had only one instruction to his players. <laughs> Get the quarterback. But everyone knows, including the family he lived with, how his humor could change anyone's day. And I tiptoe past radio because I'm thinking he's asleep. So as I'm walking past him, going back to my room, all I hear is, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> this is no lie. He said, it's Pat Albert. The nation fell in love with radio's story, but the people sitting in these seats lived that story alongside him, pulling together Saturday to celebrate the man who changed lives with a simple smile. He really had blessed so many people, and I'm so grateful for everybody. He was just a man who did the best he could. Maybe that's all any of us really need to make contributions in this world.